Another way that we have of determining in-place density is our sand cone. Oftentimes we'll correlate with our gauges and determine if our gauges are reading accurate, but it's performed by removing some soil, uh, in-place soil. Um, we're going to take a known density sand and we're going to fill the hole that we excavate with that known density and it's going to essentially give us a volume and we'll be able to mathematically determine what our in-place density is. So we'll go ahead and dig this hole. It's important to have a good surface area prepared for this to make sure it's flat, uh, your plate doesn't rock, there's no equipment moving around you once we flip this cone over. We're going to want to get a certain volume of material out of this and dig about approximately a six inch hole. So in determining where you're going to perform these tests, you're going to want to observe the area that's to be tested and you're going to want to make sure that this is representative of the entire area. You're not going to want to find any anomalous spot and take a test there. You want to try and get a representation of what's out there. We're going to excavate this carefully and make sure that the side walls on our hole are verti near to vertical as possible. If we do encounter any large rocks that protrude into our hole, we're going to want to move and go to an another location and try again. It's very important that we do not lose any soil during this operation. Any lost soil is going to be mathematically determined as a lower density and a lower compaction. If you do observe any technicians performing this test and losing any soil, it's going to be to the detriment of the contractor. It is a time consuming test. It's considered to be the more accurate test of the two determinations of density compared to the nuclear gauge. This one's more engineeringly acceptable. This test will also be utilized to determine how off or how accurate a nuclear density gauge is. Again, it's important to keep this bucket over the surface of this test so that we're able to retain any material that falls or sloughs down while we're transferring it into our bucket. One other consideration is moisture content. While we're performing this test, our material is drying back, and so we're going to use this lid over here to be able to capture and retain that moisture. The typical depth of these is approximately six inches. In the method, it has a requirement for a minimum volume of a hole based on the largest size diameter of the rock. So the larger the rock, the deeper the hole you need to get because that will be more representative. The larger the sample, the more representative. The larger the particle of rock that you have in there, the, le the more likely you are to have less representation in a smaller hole. So you'll go for the larger hole at that point. We have a pretty consistent, easily diggable material here. Our density from our gauge was at 87 pounds dry density. Um, for this soil right here, we've worked in this soil a lot. This is approximately 117 pounds at its maximum density. If, and what that basically means for uh, pounds per cubic foot, if I had a cubic foot of this material and I did as much compaction as I could on it, and if I compacted this soil to, its, to the highest degree at 100% compaction, we'd have 117 pounds of dry soil in, this, in that uh, cubic foot. So we're getting pretty close here. I'm going to gather the smaller particles here on the bottom. We're going to brush everything into our hole. Make sure that we get every particle from that hole and, main, and retain it. We'll brush even the sidewalls to make sure that any loose particles 
gets captured in this. We want to make sure that the lip on this is cleaned off very well so that we have good contact with our sand cone. This hole looks pretty good. I think that we have the proper volume for the maximum particle size on this. We're going to go ahead and take our pre-weighed cone and jug. We're going to turn it upside down and allow that sand to flow into this hole. We have a pre-calibrated mark that we're going to match up on the plate to the cone because we have calibrated the volume of this cone right here to know how much sand goes into that. Ultimately, we want to know how much sand is in the hole below the ground. Uh, consequently, to do that, we're going to have to fill this cone up. So we'll be able to determine how much sand has flowed into this, mathematically determine the volume of the hole and the cone, It'll give us that total volume underground and up here, and we'll subtract this volume from the total, the total um, volume, and that'll give us the volume of the hole in the ground. It's very important that you don't have equipment operating when this procedure is in process, because that's going to consolidate your sand and allow more to flow in there, which is going to artificially increase mathematically your, um, the volume of that hole and give you lower compaction results. We'll go over here and we'll get a weight on our material that we took out of the hole. All right, now that we've dug our hole, we're going to get a total weight on our sample with our tear. We've got 9.22 pounds, um, and we'll subtract from that the weight of this bucket so that we're certain that we've just got the weight of the soil. At this point, it's important that we determine um, our rock content, we're going to go ahead and screen this over a number four screen. Anything that is retained on top of that number four screen is going to be considered a rock and we're going to correct our maximum dry density with that number. All right, now we're going to screen this material and determine our percent rock. It's important that we retain again all the material that came out of the hole so we can be as accurate as possible with our numbers. we're trying to clean all the fine particles off of the coarser particles. All right, I feel like we've got a good enough shake on this. We've removed, for the most part, all the finer particles off the coarser particles, and we're gonna get a weight on that. So we've determined the weight of our rock, and in conjunction with the total sample, it's been determined that we've got approximately 15% rock on this one. The reason it's important is because we're going to be removing the rock from certain tests that we do to determine the maximum density. And since there is rock in the field and not in the maximum density test, we're going to mathematically calculate that rock back into our numbers. Now that we've determined the rock, I think our sand cone is done running. We'll go stop that and get it brought over here and get a weight on that as well. Our sand has ran on the cone. We'll get the weight after it has ran through. We'll determine uh, the difference between the weight of the cone and the jug full and the mass of it after it has ran. And that'll give us our total weight of sand in the hole and in the cone. And then that'll help us uh, calculate out our volume on that. 